You are not you. You are not you. And let's see, who over here? You. You're not you. You are the food that you eat. You are the company that you keep. You are what your mother gave you as a child. And you're the dirt that stuck under your fingernails when you were young. And you're 70% water. And your microbial diversity outnumbers your own microbes 360 to 1. All of that, a majority of the microbial diversity takes place in your gut. So I'm going to talk about that for a little while. Um, I want to also throw in a caveat to really understand the impact of your gut bacteria and how far-reaching it is in other fields of study. You have to be a professional. You have to uh, have a thorough understanding of endocrinology, the immune system, uh, of neurology. And unfortunately for you, you got a nonprofit farmer. <laughs> so I'll do my best. <laughs> but I want to share, you know, I'm not here to persuade or change anybody's minds today. Um, I'm really excited to spark some curiosity in you and hopefully open you up to looking at your place in this world and seeing how small we are and seeing how much of an impact we can have when we embrace that revelation. So the gut. This is, works out so well. We had a physician talk about <laughs> related things. Um, we have all of this wonderful microbial balance and this, all these things going on and working out in symbiosis. Um, but when there's dysbiosis, bad things can happen. I want to focus primarily on the neurological part of it. Um, there's a growing number of scientists and physicians that are connecting our own mental well-being to the harmony that's going on in our gut. Uh, there's a physician in Massachusetts at the Walden Institute who has uh, decided that before he medicates the people that come to his practice, he will take a simple urine test to measure for some amino acids that are a product of imbalance in bacteria in their gut flora. And he's been able to treat far-ranging cases, again, if you're dealing with depression or OCD or stress or, or a mental illness, don't take my word for it. Talk to your physician, please. This is not a medical advice. But they've been able to treat an incredible number of far-ranging problems. And it's not all fringe information. I didn't even have to mine the nether regions of the internet and social media news feeds <laughs> littered with male enhancement and weight loss supplements. No, this was... <laughs> This information is all in uh, major news outlets, and um, so we know that the... <laughs> yeah, I couldn't review the pun. <laughs> the, the gut has all this stuff going on, and uh, we know that it connects to the brain. We don't really know how, and by we, I mean people who actually do the research. Um, the assumption has been that the brain coordinates with the gut by communicating through your vagus nerve, which 90% of those nerve fibers actually are around your intestines. Recently, scientists were pretty surprised to have that assumption flip-flopped. 90% of the fibers that are communicating to your brain through the vagus nerve are actually sending information from your intestines to your brain. It just makes sense to me what came first, your gut, or your brain. <laughs> Our gut came first. Whether you believe in a paradigm of people being created in the garden from the earth with divine wind, or if you believe that we are animated star stuff, it's still the dirt. We're still on the same page. And the dirt living in our gut has actually allowed us to develop a brain capable of having these kind of conversations, where we can process our food in such an efficient way that we can have such cerebral things going on. Because when we eat, the food that we consume isn't really in us. It's kind of in between us. It's in these tubes that go all around. And then the thing that actually breaks the food down 
is the bacteria, is your biome. We'd have a really hard time extracting nutrients from the food that we consume if we didn't have a biome. So, the same thing goes for the planet. You can have the best organic fertilizer you could possibly find, pack it around the base of your tomato, and it would barely absorb any of it. So, plant growth is about facilitating life. In a handful of healthy soil, there are more organisms than people on the planet. And we need those organisms to process, to increase, to create more life. Life creates life. I love that quote, by the way. We are not simply nourished by the soil, we are the soil. That was such a profound realization for me. So, as we consume this, or as the earth kind of consumes this food, it also facilitates communication between plants. The soil functions as the immune system for the planet, in a way, it functions as the gut for the planet. And tomatoes can send out warning signals through their root fibers that are magnified by the mycelium, which are fungus roots, and they communicate with one another. They'll be like, hey, I'm getting sick. And then it'll pop up over here and be like, oh, activate defenses. So that's what the tomatoes do. <laughs> A broadleaf bean will send out signals as well and say, hey, wasps, come here, destroy these aphids. And then predatory wasps will actually receive that message. I don't really know how. But they come over and they destroy the aphids and then the plant is healthy. So the life begets life and the plants survive and thrive when we don't strip away their modes of communication, which is the living soil. So, yeah, controversy. <laughs> um, sterilizing the earth to get a product is not a smart long-term plan for feeding our growing population. It kind of works now. The point could be argued that it doesn't work very well at all. But if uh, we treat our earth this way, we lose our carbon stocks in the soil. 50% of our planet has already been altered for us to grow food and log and raise animals. And 50% of that part of the planet that has been used commercially has lost 50% of its carbon stock. Damn. Uh -oh. <laughs> so we need to look at things in a more creative light. Fortunately, we have solutions. We don't have to view our food as commodity. Our food is life. There's nothing more vibrant and life-giving to me than when I sit down for a meal with my family or in the community in which I reside, consuming food and beverages and having fun. That's the best. <laughs> All right, so we have a solution. We can rebuild our biome. We can engage in agricultural practices. Of course, the nonprofit farmer is going to tell you to eat local produce. Duh. But <laughs> if we use crop rotation, increase our crop diversity, do our own composting, or do rotational grazing, so that means animals kind of rotate and switch around and add the nutrients that they take away to the soil. Um, we can really solve and put a lot of carbon from the sky back into the earth. But if you don't want to do all that work, because it's a lot of work, I don't want to do all that work, I don't want to do a couple of those things, and it's my livelihood, <laughs> then support local agriculture. Find a farmer, there are people who are actively living out these ideas, these ideas that are bouncing off the walls in here. There's people right now who are sweating and having a miserable afternoon to help restore these things on this planet. So find those people, support them, give them back rubs, <laughs> whatever you can do, keep them happy. So the same technology that enables us to uh, see our own connectivity with the gut, allows us to see the connectivity with the soil. And it's a little different, it's a jump now, but there's also a phenomenon called emotional contagion. Has anyone here ever heard of emotional contagion? Good, I can make up anything I want. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, um, there is, if you, the, the theory is that you mirror the, the spirit that, of the company that you keep for one happy friend, you have an increase in your likelihood to be happy by 11%. 
for one sad friend, they double the chance that you will become unhappy. And a, a study in Finland found that the teenagers there in certain schools, when they conducted this study, kind of gravitated to the most depressed possible common denominator. But it's Finland, so maybe it was the weather. <laughs> and any mother in the audience, moms in the house, put them up. Thank you, moms. They know that they pass their stress and their feelings on to their infants. And it's actually something that's been confirmed. It's not just intuitive. It is as real as the sun. So this is not your permission to abandon people who are stressed and depressed. Please, that's not a solution <laughs> to the problem. This is an invitation to increase your connectivity to those people. Because healing does not happen in isolation. It doesn't happen when we isolate things in our field. We don't heal the earth. And when we wipe out our genetic diversity in our guts, healing doesn't happen. Healing happens when we connect. It's always facilitated through relationships. And I have the unique privilege in a couple of days to renew my vows with my wife. For me, this is as much spiritual as scientific. For a long time, I perceived the world in a way that felt isolated. I felt like my behavior and my actions were only of consequence to me, and that my perspective merited more attention than the perspective of others. And that's garbage. When we allow ourselves to disabuse ourselves of that notion and assume that someone else's perspective is just as valuable as ours, I've never been happier in my whole life. For me, identity is absolutely better lost than found. When I lose my identity and the well-being of others, that leads to the greatest and lasting contentment. So when we hear things like love one another, treat each other kindly, I believe that it's practically just a smart thing to do. And empirically, it's obvious. Because the truth is that we are each other. Just as the community in our gut is healthy when it thrives in symbiosis, we a community of people thrive when we function harmoniously. We are an organism. Your classroom is an organism. Your family is an organism. Your church is an organism. Every way that we connect to each other is just another expression of a life form. So, my hope for all of you is that you come to realize something that I think you probably all already know. Something that is evident in our bowels. <laughs> that we are all connected and we're in this together thank you guys